Developing stories out of the Middle East as Pakistan fires back at Iran and the U.S. launches additional strikes at Houthi targets. And the latest Apple Watches will be back on sale today, but with some changes. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is The Morning Rundown. Today is Thursday, January 18th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. We begin this morning with the latest developments out of the Middle East as the possibility of a wider conflict looms. Pakistan says it has carried out strikes targeting terrorists inside Iran. This comes after an Iranian missile attack on Tuesday that Pakistani officials say killed two children and was unprovoked. Pakistan saying its strikes on Iran were highly coordinated and specifically targeted terrorist hideouts. An Iranian official says the strikes killed at least nine people, including four children. Pakistan's Foreign Affairs Ministry released a statement saying Pakistan fully respects the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The sole objective of today's act was in pursuit of Pakistan's own security and national interest, which is paramount and cannot be compromised. Meanwhile, the United States launched another round of airstrikes against Houthi targets in Yemen late Wednesday night. U.S. forces targeted 14 Houthi missiles that were loaded to be fired from Yemen. The U.S. saying the missiles presented an imminent threat to ships in the Red Sea. The U.S. is redesignating the Houthis as a terrorist organization. The move subjects the Houthis to economic sanctions aimed to cut off funding to the militant group. In a meeting at the White House on Wednesday, House Speaker Mike Johnson says he pressed President Biden on immigration reform, calling the situation at the southern border a national security and humanitarian catastrophe. Biden invited congressional leaders to the White House to push for more aid to Ukraine, which has been stalled out in Congress. House Republicans demanding stricter border policy before any agreement on foreign aid can be reached. There's been a record number of migrants illegally crossing into the country at the U.S.-Mexico border. Biden has requested $61.4 billion in additional funding to Ukraine with additional funding for Israel. Still, funding hinges on what border policy changes can be agreed upon by both sides. Speaker Johnson spoke to reporters after the meeting. We understand that there's concern about uh, the safety, security, sovereignty of Ukraine. But the American people have those same concerns about our own domestic sovereignty and our safety and our security. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer expressed some hope in talks moving in the right direction, but did note the only way anything gets passed is through compromise. A deadline set by the Department of Homeland Security for Texas to halt its recent actions of denying Border Patrol agents full access to a public park along the southern border passed on Wednesday. Now DHS says they'll refer the matter to the Justice Department. The war of words continues to brew between Texas and the Biden administration amid the immigration crisis at the border after the state's National Guard took over Shelby Park last week. The state said federal officials weren't doing enough to stop illegal crossings in the area. The Department of Homeland Security issued a cease and desist letter to Texas over the weekend, calling for state officials to stop blocking Border Patrol agents' entry. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton responded Wednesday, sending a letter back to Homeland Security, rejecting its request and saying the state will continue utilizing its constitutional authority to defend her territory. On Wednesday, a Maine judge deferred a ruling on whether former President Donald Trump can appear on the state's primary ballot, saying the U.S. Supreme Court needs to make its decision first on if Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, known as the Insurrection Clause, can be used to keep Trump from running for president again. Maine Secretary of State barred Trump from the ballot last month, citing his actions around the January 6 riots on the Capitol a week after the Colorado Supreme Court's similar decision. Trump, the GOP frontrunner, has appealed the state's decisions, leaving his name on both ballots as of now. The U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear the case out of Colorado, with arguments set for February 8th. 
The main judge ordered Maine's Secretary of State to make a new ruling within 30 days of the Supreme Court's decision. On Wednesday, Trump voluntarily attended his defamation trial in New York for a second day, where he sparred with the judge, who threatened to kick him out of court for making comments as his accuser, columnist E. Jean Carroll, was testifying. Trump says he will not be at today's court proceedings, so he can attend the funeral of his mother-in-law, who passed away last week at the age of 78. TikTok is facing another legal challenge, this time in Iowa, as the state's attorney general filed a lawsuit on Wednesday alleging that the social media app is misleading parents about the content children are accessing and viewing. Seeking financial penalties, Iowa claims TikTok lied about inappropriate content on its platform, including nudity, drug use, alcohol use, and self-harm. Other states have filed similar lawsuits. In a statement, TikTok said it has safeguards in place for young users, including parental controls and time limits for those under 18. CEOs of several social media companies, including TikTok, are set to testify in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee over online child sexual exploitation later this month. Finally this morning, the latest versions of the Apple Watch will be returning to Apple store shelves, but with some modifications. Beginning today, Apple will once again sell its Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches online and at its retail stores, but the watches will be without the blood oxygen feature. This comes after Apple was banned from using the technology following an intellectual property dispute with the medical device company Massimo. The blood oxygen app will still be on the watches, but Apple says when users tap on it, they will be alerted that the feature is no longer accessible. Apple is still appealing the International Trade Commission's ruling that found Apple infringed on Massimo's patents. These are your top stories for this Thursday. You can now connect with the Morning Rundown in a variety of ways, including subscribing to our podcast or signing up for our newsletter. Just go to san.com slash rundown for more details. Unbiased, straight facts, that's straight arrow news. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.